plus. Common perception is that more is always good. Is it always true? Let's find out. One fine day I was doing this posterior polar cataract when I witnessed something extremely unusual. I'm injecting ovary inside the eye. It's the usual amount, but I witnessed something very rare. I could see that the posterior capsule rupture happening during ovary injection into the anterior chamber even before the anterior capsule was punctured for the rexus. Well, I had not seen anything like this in my career. This was weird. This really got me thinking. I dug deep into my video library and tried to make sense of what I have seen and just trying to find out if I could find similar uh, cases in the past. I got hold of three more instances of such weird spontaneous posterior capsule ruptures in these polar cataracts. In all these cases, we can clearly see that there's no contact of an instrument with the posterior capsule, but we see a posterior capsule tear occurring. Let us look at each of these cases individually and try to make some sense on why these things are happening. Case 1. This is a 50-year-old myope with a classical posterior polar cataract. I am injecting a dispersive OVD first, followed by sodium hyaluronate. The OVD is not in excess as the usual quantity which I use for all my other patients. But lo and behold, I could clearly see, visualize that the posterior capsule was splitting open in front of my eyes. This was confirmed once the cataract was removed. Well, the case was managed pretty well eventually with good visual outcome. Moving on to the second case, this was way back in 2011. A 25-year-old myope with a posterior polar cataract. I managed to remove the nucleus without causing any posterior capsule rent. But before going into the cortex aspiration, I have injected ovary inside the antechamber to prevent uh, the chamber from shallowing. So I have religiously followed the most important commandment that is to never allow the chamber to shallow. Now, I enter the chamber with my bimanual hand pieces and as soon as irrigation kicks in, the chamber deepens and suddenly I can see two splits happening there and along with two waves. The first split is of the posterior capsule rupture and the second split in the second wave is of the anterior hyaloid rupture. Now moving on quickly to the third case. Again, I am patient with posterior polar cataract the nucleus is successfully removed, so far no PC tear. Again at every stage ovid is being injected whenever the phaco probe comes out. The chamber is being maintained religiously. Now I need to remove the cortex. Boom! Again the PC splits wide open. Mind you, no instrument is touching it. Moving on to the fourth case. This is the weirdest of all the lot. This time the cortex is also aspirated and no PC tear until now. So far so good. Now is the time to implant the lens. I fill the bag with OVD and go on to load my lens. And as soon as I am done and ready to push the lens, lo and behold, what am I seeing here? A large posterior capsule tear is tearing at me. So what caused the PC tear in all these cases? There is no direct contact of the posterior capsule with any of the instruments. Let us try to solve the puzzle. So what is the common link in all these four cases apart from being ossipolar cataracts? Well, three of the four patients were young and less than 30 years. Two out of them were myopes. So these characters, young patients and myopes, lead us to the common link, which is all these eyes had low scleral rigidity. So what's the big deal about this? When we go back and analyze, Raised infusion pressure is the reason why the pathological posterior capsule split wide open. However, similar phenomenon of spontaneous PC rupture is relatively uncommon in eyes with normal scleral rigidity. But in eyes with low scleral rigidity, the sclera can stretch a little bit which allows more fluid or OVD to accumulate in the eye which eventually will raise the pressure inside the chamber.
and the weak posterior capsule it just gives way. Well, what can we do in such a scenario? In all eyes with posterior polar cataract, apart from all the standard prescribed precautions taken during surgery, one additional precaution need to be taken. That would be just to decrease the infusion pressure at every stage in the surgery, from the time the ovary is injected into the eye to the time the side ports are hydrated. In short, we need to work on the principle of low flow and low pressure surgery. Well, it is a simple philosophy. Let us try and put these principles into practice and see whether our hypothesis works. This is a young patient with posterior polar cataract. The OVD is put and note that the chamber is underfilled as is evident from the presence of the air bubble and the appearance of the corneal folds during incision. During nucleus aspiration, the bottleite is kept at 50 cm, the correspondingly low flow rate and vacuum. The posterior capsule continues to remain intact and while cortex aspiration, note that the bottle height. We start off with a low bottle height and it is progressively increased once any antechamber instability is noted. Finally, the eye is maintained soft during IOL insertion, ovary removal, even during side port hydration. Now we try the same principle of low flow, low pressure surgery in the next 8 consecutive cases of postipolar cataract in patients who are younger than 40 years. In all of these eyes, the eyes were kept soft during every stage of the surgery. The bottle height during nucleus aspiration was never above 50 centimeters and during cortex aspiration and OVD aspiration, it was never above 70 centimeters. And in all these eight cases, spontaneous rupture of the posterior capsule is avoided. Well, in our series, this new principle of low flow and low pressure surgery along with the old time-tested standard precautions reduce the incidence of spontaneous rupture of posterior capsule in young patients with the postipolar cataracts. The moral of the story is short. More is not always good. Traditionally, we are all taught to be so obsessive on maintaining a deep chamber during cataract surgery to avoid surge. We increase the bottle height, use pressurized infusion, use OVDs to deepen the chamber. But we can clearly see that this can be counterproductive in a select group of patients. So in these eyes with postipolar cataracts with low scleral rigidity, I would say that less is better. Less infusion, less pressure inside the eye at every stage. That's the way to go. To conclude, low flow, low pressure reduces the incidence of spontaneous posterior capsule rupture in these vulnerable eyes. So next time, please do watch the bottle height. Thank you so much. Wonderful. I think this was a wonderful presentation considering posterior polar cataract problems faced by many ophthalmologists. And with this particular solution and with this take, uh, take away message, take home message for all of us, probably it will be a nice thing to avoid PC rupture. So important remarks from the stalwarts here. On the uh, can I add to it, sir? Sure. Uh, I think to my best knowledge, we, it, it, what we are trying to say is stabilize the chamber and prevent sudden hypotony. We never recommend that you increase the pressure in the anterior chamber. Whatever you described, all the three cases or four cases, there was sudden increase in the pressure, maybe in a people with uh, you know younger age and the scleral rigidity was a different thing. Uh, that point well taken, very well taken. But in general, it's not that uh, uh, um, uh, we inflate the chamber, we probably prevent the sudden collapse of chamber or reducing the intraocular pressure so that the vitreous comes forward and splits yeah. the AC. So uh, this uh, yeah, sudden shallowing also is dangerous and Correct. sudden so deepening is also dangerous. So it's extremely sudden critical. Sudden deepening, I totally uh, agree so with sudden, you. See, it's a very thin, in, in younger patients, Unintentionally, we are vulnerable to sudden deepen because the sclera itself is easily to vulnerable to stretch. We don't intend to deepen it, but because it can accommodate so much volume, it just spreads. See, important point is nobody highlights about reducing the bottle height. We say save everything, but never have we, in, they don't highlight that, you know, bottle height has to be consciously reduced. 
uh, in uh, posterior polar cataracts, especially in, fact, in young patients. Uh, there are in fact people who would say that uh, don't even bother about that, just put AC maintainer because that's, yeah. that, that gives a constant pressure. Yeah. Uh, AC maintainer is a good idea again sir, again uh, if you maintain the pressure, correct. if you if so, you put a AC maintainer and uh, bottle touch uh, the ceiling, what you the same is, things is going to happen again there. Correct. That also is going to worsen in the same situation. Dr. Chaudhary sir, Dr. Kashyap sir, anything? It is uh, highlighted in the management of the posterior polar cataract. It is a slow yes. phaco. It means slow on every side. Yes. Your phaco power should be slow. Your including OVD injection also, including ha, side port hydration also. Should be. Every, every Many step. time you encounter when everything is okay, just polishing of the posterior capsule, it should be avoided because so it can so it is a good idea and it is but, but it, right. in these situations all the four cases they were spontaneous rupture sir in the sense the instrument was very far away from the uh, posterior capsule but still because the but uh, this happens when suddenly you enter the yeah ISO. that is the reason in this your cases it happened when you are working yeah, it, already it happens when you introduce let, sir, let, uh, let dr chaudhary answer yeah. okay okay sir. Yeah, in this case, this happened when you are already working and one case you have out of the wound yes. when you have removed the equipment. So it was not the sudden inflation of the pressure. Uh, it, uh, because in the third you, are, you are completed no, the fourth surgery, one, the last are, case is talking about. You have removed the, your equipment, you are filling the lens yeah. at that time it ruptured. Yeah, because it was overfilled sir. It was overfilled. Uh, ideally, it ideally it should rupture when your probe was, IA probe was in. It is that's because what I'm telling you. At the time, the pressure was much more. What you have removed the pressure? No, uh, that is what I'm trying to tell you, sir. Because there is no contact of any instrument in yes. the posterior capsule. Uh, just because it can stretch more, it so, can accommodate more <coughs> fluid, it can. So it is, uh, it is said in the posterior cap, uh, posterior polar cataract. If you have the your capsule intact, still that capsule is weak. Yeah. So yes, you should true. be careful while touching, while inflating. Anyway, it is a good point to be taken care. Uh, does the centurion help while well, it is maintaining the pressure? It should help, sir. But I, I can, uh, I demonstrated similar thing with on a gravity-based instrument also. The basic principle, principle is that you know infusion has not to be more. That is what is the principle. So it can happen even with your. Uh, you can centurion, centurion just control the IOP, IOP. whatever you keep. Yes. Just so it maintain. That, that is, uh, it can be helpful, but it can be reproducible even with a gravity-based system as well. Yeah, I think I'm just going okay. out, uh, uh, something away I'm from this particular I topic. <laughs> Uh, maybe for the benefit of uh, the junior people over here, when we have a PCR and we have introduced a lens and then we want to remove the viscoelastic, once again I at least in my practice always follow that. I reduce the flow to minimum, mechanically I reduce the flow, yes, sir. not only true. bottle height, yeah, but drop process. by drop the, uh, uh, the flow goes inside because suddenly when we raise the pressure, the yes. lens might drop uh, through PCR. Was the IOP recorded at the same moment? It was not IOP based, it was gravity based system only. So it was. Uh, and these are the special operations conditions and where you, you have to put the viscoelastic before you remove your. Uh, yeah, we did, sir. If the second case, we had to add, put viscoelastic. When the I irrigation I cannula gets inside, with the visco already there, oh, and irrigation cannula gets in, and oh, irrigation oh, comes oh, inside, oh, then again, the visco itself, along with the irrigation fluid, is Thank going you, to sir. rupture it. Thank you. Thank you. Good, good. So let's call upon.